cold ground on our wind up on the grid. It's lights out and away we go on this week's grid walk. We love Mercedes. It was a wonderful weekend for Mercedes, and obviously we are thriving in a P2, P3 finish. It was just wonderful. But how realistic can this hope really be? Can it continue? Are the is there data there? Is there numbers there for us to hold on to? Please say yes. Yes. Yay, great. Okay, next. No. I think it depends. <laughs> Um, like I'll, I'll lay the case. I'm going to, I'm going to lay out the case. I'm going to give you the both, both sides of this, of what I'm actually seeing. But I think, I think it's all about where, where the expectations are. So like, I thought it was worth celebrating the way we did because Lewis said he had fun driving the car this weekend. <laughs> like, beyond the P2, the, the vibes are happier the Christian Horner is now hornering again. Like the amount of <laughs> quotes. Um, we're recording this Tuesday evening after the race weekend. Between the end of the race and now, there's like three different quotes about Horner, like cautioning Mercedes and and like like there's lots there he's talking a lot about Mercedes again, which is always a good barometer f- to me for whether Red Bull feels a little threatened. So always want to be int- part of the conversation. Right. Yeah, like Horner thought George Russell was like a really bad driver this weekend and he's warning Toto about that cost cap and bringing big upgrades and what that means. Uh, So all the intangibles, great. Let's go look at the tangibles. Uh, First thing is Quali. Want to start at Quali? Sure. All right. Lewis was P5, but I ran all of the top drivers' best quality times. So what I did is I took their best sector times and then I added that up to make what would have been their optimum best lap possible. And that put Lewis clear in P2. So that's like when you probably heard a lot over the weekend of people saying like, oh, if Lewis just put that final lap together, Mercedes would have been in P2. Now, of course, the driver has to put the lap together and he didn't. But if we are just trying to distill this down to like pure pace of the car in quality trim, I think looking at all the driver's best laps compared to each other is a good barometer of what that is. So... That's, you know, notch on the pro side. We Yeah, I, I, I hear that as full optimism, full possibilities. And Lewis pulled out the P2 when it really mattered. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, now, the, the con of the quality time is that the optimum Lewis lap was still four and a half tenths behind the optimum max lap. And he actually abandoned his fastest lap at the end because he just got over the radio that he already had pull. So he just was like, okay. So we have his best sector one, best sector two, and then what would have probably been his second best sector three. Right. Right. For this optimum lap. Um, But if you told me, so, that, so that's the con. The con is there's still this big gap to Red Bull, uh, but we knew that. But that's for everyone. That's not just a Mercedes issue. That's an everyone issue. And if you told me coming into it that if I was looking at optimum quality lap time and that Lewis would only be four and a half tenths behind Max and the Red Bull, I would have been like, I'll take it. So it, it does all get back to, you're going to hear me say this through this whole segment, like, what are your expectations for right now at this point in the season? And my personal expectations and hopes and dreams for this upgrade was become clearly the second fastest team, get closer. That's it. Get closer. <laughs> and yeah. I think it's going to be late in the season before anyone would have even, even has the potential to close that gap. Yeah. And we're only starting to see the beginnings or like what some of the B spec cars can actually do. And I mean, Red Bull is so ahead in development that, you know, if I have to pick if the conversation is Red Bull and someone, my best bet or my best pick would be that it would be Mercedes. And then I'm like, okay, 
Because obviously if Red Bull's all the way over here and that's like no one's going to reach them right, right now, not never, right now, I want then that next in line, that to be Mercedes. Right. And that's, that's how I'm, that's why it was worthy of the celebration of the great weekend we had. Uh, some other like interesting, like I'll swing back qualifying positive that even when you're comparing this optimum lap times, the Mercedes is still a tenth and a half faster than Carlos's optimum lap time and a uh, like three tenths faster than Alonso's broken floor lap time. I really do think that's the asterisk in the entire weekend is Alonso's broken car. But as of Monday morning and or Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, as of Tuesday morning, post race weekend, the quotes coming out of the Aston camp is that they were really shocked at the pace of the Mercedes and that they didn't yeah. expect even, and they like were qualifying it. We're like, yeah, Alonso had the broken floor, but they, they clearly felt like they still should have been able to stay in front. Yeah. If they didn't anticipate the development and progress that Mercedes had made, and I don't know if they just, again, cause Monaco was not like the greatest tell of like what the new upgrades could have done. And just how ahead Aston has been that, you know, the little bit of floor damage or anything, it was, I feel like, you know, justified or understanding as to why they expected that. But currently in all of my attire, I say, ha ha, you were wrong. I, I will also, I'll point out something that, that makes me sad as a Lance Stroll fan. But um, an interesting thing in the data is there is a lot being made about Alonzo's floor damage, but I think the big thing that the floor damage did for his qualifying times was make the car unpredictable for him because his fastest optimum lap, when I put optimum lap by a tenth and a half. So Lance was able to just put together the quality lap and Alonzo couldn't, but theoretically, even with the broken floor, Alonso should have qualified higher than Lance. Um, I just, I've seen a lot about like, oh, well, it's not Alonso's fault because he had a damaged floor. And I'm just going to throw out here, who who damaged the floor? No, there was a lot of, I don't know, any other word besides like peace in Alonso's voice on the radio that felt like mysterious like I don't know mysterious like he wasn't gonna fight Lance he wasn't gonna battle and even in like the last lap like he's just waving to all of the fans and like in his home race and like could have tried to race his teammate but like was flat out like I'm not going to so I don't know if it was just like he got to a point where he accepted that this was currently no. happening or just like I it was so not he couldn't do it Alonso, he couldn't. right what is going to make Alonzo look worse? Or trying to pass Lance and being unable to? Or saying, oh, you know what? I'm just going to let Lance. I'm not going to challenge Lance at all. Don't worry. And I'm not even saying, like, like I'm I'm saying it's because of the floor. Like, I, I know Alonzo would beat Lance. But, like, nothing, everything Alonzo does is to make Alonzo look better. <laughs> like, yes, it's yeah. just, yeah. And it just, like, there was so much conversation, and I don't mean to go off on this tangent. We'll get back to the Mercedes, Mercedes. race. Yes. Um, but, like, there was so much, like, oh, good guy Alonzo. All he did was make Lance look bad. Like, there's nothing good guy Alonzo about what he was doing there. Like, he was doing a favor. It's like, oh, tell him not to worry. I'm just trying to close the gap in case it rains. And that, it was, like, very uh, and off all brand. Of the all of the commentators were like, wow, that's so nice of Alonzo being nice to his teammate. Oh, it's because his teammate's dad owns the... Like, no, he made Lance look awful. So, like, yeah. that's not... Like, if that's nice guy Alonzo is making his teammate look like a chump, like, <laughs> I don't... like, come on, guys, we got to rework our expectations. <laughs> but getting back to positive Mercedes land, let's move on to the race. Because I think this era Mercedes has a very... Unique trend where Friday, everyone's frustrated. Well, and I think part of that, they were the least frustrated this Friday they've been in a while because they actually know how to set up this car instantly. Haven't been able to set up the previous concept for a year and a half with this car. 
Instantly. Got it. Thank they you, have Monaco, a, I guess. Right. Then they have a mediocre to okay quality, and then it comes alive on race day. This weekend was no exception to that. I'm going to look at two different data points. I'll talk about the first one at the beginning. So all of the front-running cars that were not a Red Bull started on softs, which means that they're on the similar, same fuel load. They're all on those tires at the same time. We can average out their pace and compare them. Clarifying that Charles is not included in this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. I was, because yeah. Because of his... We have it. We, I mean, we'll get into enough Charles later in the episode, but just as caveat of Charles wasn't part of this yeah. that data set this it's time. It's not representative. He's behind all the cars, <laughs> and he was on hards and then switched yes. soft again. We don't ugh. right. So I'm on, I'm looking at Hamilton, Russell, Alonso, Stroll, and Sainz. The five drivers towards the front who all started on softs. So I'm going to put this up on the screen on the YouTube video so you guys can visualize the numbers I'm about to give. But I've then compared all of their soft times to the t average pace that Max was doing on the mediums. Now, you should know that the mediums, if normally, at least this weekend, it, it, all of the same fuel adjusted would be about 0.7 to a second a lap slower. Okay. <laughs> now, Lewis's pace on the softs compared to Max's mediums was only four tenths a lap down. No, yeah, yeah. So slower than Max on the mediums, but not but not, not that bad. Not. It's less than half a second. Less than a second. The second fastest was Carlos on the soft, and he was nearly six tenths a lap slower than Max on his mediums. So he was two tenths slower than Lewis. Then there was Russell, and he was seven tenths slower. And then you get the Alpines, where Stroll is a full second a lap slower on his softs than Max is on his mediums, and then Alonso is 1.1 seconds a lap slower. And so by Alpine, she means Aston Martin. Okay, I'm going to put the champagne down. <laughs> I had like four sips. Like that has nothing to do with that. Um, it's just been a long day. Um, what do all these numbers I'm saying mean? What it means is that the Mercedes was, the Mercedes in Lewis's hands was the fastest car on track not named Max Verstappen for the first stint of the race. Positive, positive things. Right. And if we're going on this scale of we just want to get closer to Red Bull, this is a positive sign. Uh, why, besides the upgrades, is a normal next question. Um, I do think that Barcelona is just a track that favors the Mercedes car. It was also hot. Um you looked like you were about to hit a button. That's why I paused. <laughs> no, I just, my brain was like, I don't want to hear things that, you know, I mean, because next race being Canada, mm -hmm. I just feel like it's usually not necessarily hot and potentially wet. <laughs> yes. Canada in June feels like, a, oh, could be either. Uh, yeah. The Mercedes car has really struggled with tire warm-up. And whenever there's a race that's rough on the tires, which is like a Barcelona or a Silverstone, or it's very hot, the Mercedes is kind to its tires and much kinder than all the cars. And therefore, they get into the working window well, and then they don't degrade. And you could see that in like how quickly they pit the Ferraris. And then, but like Lewis and Russell went so much further on the softs than anyone thought they would in the race. Um, and their pace really took until a lap like 22, 23 to really start to take a dive. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievably impressive. They were, yeah, they they were not falling back dramatically to max, essentially. <laughs> now, part of that is that Red Bull was managing its pace and was like, yeah, sure, whatever, just keep, yep, done, moving on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the circuit-specific nature of this. Could, could be... This could be a little bit of a mirage. So that's the check and the negative. 
Uh, but my brain hears like, but Silverstone, <laughs> like, uh-huh. of uh-huh. course I, I hear everything else that you're saying, but of course my brain's like, okay, but Silverstone. So like, so, so great. I'll just get through Canada and I'll just be like waiting. But no, I, I believe that there could still potentially be hope, but my brain is now just like, okay, Silver, no matter what happens in Canada, just Silverstone can be better. I will end this with a check on the positive column, which is comparing Max Lewis and George's uh, average lap time on the final stint, which was the softs. And they were all on softs together. Lewis's average lap time was six tenths behind Max, and George's was eight. I'm rounding up a little bit. Less than a second. Which is less than a second and was much better than everyone else on track at that time. So I'm giving all these numbers and all this context to say, I think Mercedes is back. Cheers to that. Cheers to less sad weekends, the new W14, may I hate you less than the W13. The season starts now. Thank you so much for listening to this segment for episode 20 of Gridwalk. Ah, 2-0. That's so cool. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more F1 content, more F1 videos. We make stuff all the time. You've made it this far in this video. So watch the rest of the podcast. It's so, it's right here. You could, ready? Click, 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 click. Ready? Come with it. Click, 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 click. Click, 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 click.